everywhere I teach in the world, many people tell me they want to experience the unknown. Yet when push comes to shove, they want it on their own terms. Here's the catch. If something comes to you on your own terms, then it's not an unknown. It's a predictable known. So what does it mean to step into the unknown? Everything we create begins with an internal idea, thought, concept, or image, whether it's health, wealth, a relationship, buying a home, writing a book, composing a song, and so on. For some people, however, when external circumstances such as serendipity, coincidences, and synchronicities appear in their lives that are in alignment with that internal vision, they become paralyzed, paralyzed by the fear of failure, fear of success, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of what other people will think, and a host of other reasons. Rather than continuing to follow the signposts and clues towards the next step, they stop just short of bringing their creation to fruition. When in fact, if they just continued to move deeper in trust in the unknown, they may have found themselves with a whole host of new possibilities opening up before them. Instead, they desperately look for more external validations rather than making the necessary choices that are in alignment with that future vision. Here's the truth about these decisive moments of our lives. If you can't trust the circumstances, things, or events that show up in your life, then you don't trust the unknown. And if you don't trust the unknown, then you don't trust the unknown, then you don't trust in your creation. And if you don't trust in your creation, then if you don't trust in your creation, then you don't trust in yourself. And if you don't trust in yourself, then you don't trust in possibility. From the time we're children, we're conditioned into believing the unknown is a scary place. So the moment we step out of our comfort zone into the unknown, even if we feel insecure, at least insecurity feels safe because it feels familiar. Insecurity then is a daily baseline emotion. And because it's so familiar, we have no problem keeping it under control. Most of us operate in low levels of insecurity every day. But when we decide to put something on the line, when we take a risk, step out of the known and predictable, and declare that we want to be defined by a vision of the future instead of a memory of the past, it makes sense that this unknown future is going to feel uncomfortable. The fact that you're no longer in familiar territory only serves to magnify that insecurity. Now, even though the voice of insecurity has always been there, it's clinging to the known, and in its desperation, it becomes the loudest voice in our head. The truth is we'll never grow unless we face the challenges, the unknown presence. Brushing up against the unknown is a big deal for a lot of people, and it's something I witness all the time. Seeing people recoil in the face of it inspires me to do the opposite, to throw myself further headlong into the unknown. Why? The fact that so many people are afraid of it shows me I need to dive deeper into it. That's the kind of effort that makes us feel more alive. And that's the kind of effort that brings us into contact with an immaterial essence or resource within us. That part to us which is greater than the individual self. If all possibilities exist in the quantum or the unified field, that invisible field of intelligence that is organizing and unifying all the laws of nature, which we could call the mind of God or the very fabric of everything material. When you stop trusting in possibility, then you not only stop trusting in possibility, then you not only stop trusting in yourself, but you're no longer trusting in the divine. Then what? Then you're back to your animal nature, trying, wishing, wanting, hoping, begging, fighting. You're back to the same person trying to create something new on your own terms again. The same old personality trying to create a new personal reality. The bottom line is, if external circumstances are showing up that are in alignment with your internal vision, don't overthink the decisions that lead you further into the unknown. Those synchronicities are simply the universe calling you to step into your new future. Instead, those events should be seen as signs pointing you towards that direction. So why not see it as proof that your outer reality is beginning to unfold equal to your inner vision? And why not take the energy 
of the elevated emotions these coincidences create, like excitement and inspiration, and use that new energy to create the next opportunity. If you keep doing this repeatedly, you'll discover you're moving further away from familiar territory into even more possibilities. Then you will believe more in yourself, possibility, the unknown, and the divine that lives within you even more. And most importantly, that you are the creator of your life instead of the victim of it. When it comes to stepping into the unknown, intellectualizing a process or problem won't cut it. In fact, I often find it's the people who perform this kind of incessant analysis who feel the most fear and insecurity when confronted with the unknown. The reason is because they're constantly analyzing themselves, their actions, and their place in the world within the emotions of fear, lack, insecurity, or unworthiness. If they instead understood that all these feelings are an emotional record of the past, they would understand that the very act of overanalyzing and overthinking means they're looking for a solution within the emotional domain of the past. It means they're thinking in the past rather than the possibilities of the future. If you're trying to create a new future, thinking within the emotions of the past is not going to help. And it's certainly not the place you want to be focusing your energy. Take this, for example. Let's say you had an amazing, expansive morning meditation. It was so real that it seemed like you could see, smell, taste, hear, and touch your future creation. If how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature, when all your mind and heart is engaged in that vision of the future, you are connected to the energy of that future. Why? Because you're in a vibrational match with that electromagnetic potential that already exists as a possibility in the quantum field. But if when you came back to your senses, you went right back into the fear or insecurity, the moment you recoil in fear of the unknown, you're no longer connected to the energy of your future or even seeing your future because you're looking at it through the lens of the past. Instead, you're actually fulfilling your own prophecy because by broadcasting the same energy, you are creating your past all over again. And that's just where your energy is in the familiar reality of your past. It's only when you get beyond the emotion of fear and move into the unknown. Despite the fear that you turn your fear into passion and courage. Now all of a sudden you can begin to see your future again. You stop recreating your past. The body is going to react to the fear. It's going to recoil, shake, twist your heart, and upset your stomach in anxiety. But that's just because it's confronting the unknown. That's our limited animal state driven by the hormones of stress. The people who stop and change fear into an elevated emotion, despite anxiety and the body's resistance, will tell you they too were afraid about stepping into the unknown, but their passion for their vision was greater than their fear. They will also tell you the effort was worth the reward of what they found on the other side, liberation, freedom, wholeness, and more self-love. It makes sense that the emotions of your future dreams should be the emotions you're living by when you are conscious in your everyday life. Because the moment you disconnect from these emotions, you're back to feeling lack and separation from your future. But if you're staying in that elevated emotional state of the future throughout your day, and your passion for your vision is greater than your fear of the unknown or fear of the unknown or fear of failure, then your body feels like that future event has already happened. This is how we transcend the emotion of fear one day at a time. That's why we're training and doing all these meditations in the first place to condition our brain and bodies out of the past and into the future until we think and feel in a more elevated way all the time. That's a new state of being with a new energy, a new personality which is intimately connected to a new personal reality. When we feel like what we're creating has already happened, because we are living by those elevated emotions throughout our day, 
we're less likely to wonder if we're doing something wrong and less likely to analyze, intellectualize, or overthink why our future hasn't yet happened. In fact, if we feel like our future has already happened, we will be less likely to try to force, predict, fight for, or control outcomes in our life. Why would you do that if you conditioned your body into feeling like that new future has already happened? If you truly and repeatedly conditioned your body to feel thankful, appreciative, empowered, free, and in love with life every day, then in time it makes sense that you would trust your future completely, and chances are likely that stepping into and trusting the unknown will create a whole bunch of new opportunities that you would have never seen coming that you would have never known until you stepped out of your predictable life and into the unknown future. The bottom line is this. To create something new in our lives requires a series of daily steps into the unknown. So the question is, are you ready to take that first step into the unknown and stay there 